let's talk about three phase transformers. We begin with one transformer, this one. Let's give it a name. Let's call that transformer X and the primary will be X1 and the secondary will be X2. And let's add two more transformers identical to that one, this one and this other one. And they have names. Y with the primary Y1 and the secondary Y2 and Z with primary Z1 and secondary Z2. Each one of those single phase transformers has a ratio of 200 to 100 volts. Let's connect the primaries in a Y, in a star, like this. And then we feed uh, the three transformers from a three phase system like A1, B1 and C1. We could connect the primaries in a delta too and connect that delta to a three phase system of voltages A of the primary, B of the primary and C of the primary. Now let me move that a little bit to the right to make room for a source, this source, a Y connected three phase symmetrical source with values that are 200 volts with 90 degrees, that is the voltage of the phase A to the neutral in the primary and 200 with negative 3 and 200 with negative 150 degrees. Let's have a look at that graphically. The voltage neutral to A1 is this one, neutral to B1 and neutral to BC, 200 volts, 90 degrees, negative 3, negative 150 degrees. Now, do you agree with me that the voltage in X2, neglecting the drops in those impedances, etc., the voltage in X2 would be pretty much 100 volts with 90 degrees. It would be a voltage like this one, right? And the voltage in Y2 uh, will be 100 volts with the phase of B1, this one. Mm -hmm. Negative 30 degrees. And the voltage in Z2, 100 volts with negative 150 degrees. Now, how are we going to connect those secondaries, right? And the answer is, surprising, any way we want. Any way? Yeah, any way we want. That's crazy. Let's see how crazy that is. Let me connect the non-dot of Y2 to the dot of X2, like this. Let me connect the dot of Z2 to the dot of Y2, this way. Let me give names to each one of the phasers to know which coil we're talking of and which one is the dot and which one is the non-dot. There, you see um, coil X2, the dot, the non-dot, etc. Now, the question is going to be this one. If that connection works like this, join the dot of X2 to the non-dot of Y2. There. Join the dot of Y2 to the dot of Z2 there. And the remaining terminals will be M, this one, and N, this other one. I have a question for you. What is the voltage of N with respect to M? What is a, how much higher N is than M? Let me make room. Do you agree that the voltage from M to N would be the voltage in X1? We climb up 100 with 90 degrees plus the voltage in Y1 100 with negative 30 degrees minus the voltage in Z1 minus 100 with negative 150 degrees. We add them up in the HP prime like so. And the answer is that that voltage is 200 volts with 30 degrees, which happens to be this one. What's the point of this? Only to show you that we could connect those three coils in the secondary any way we want and we could determine what voltages result. Not that we want but that is a possibility. If we find a connection like this, it's more likely because someone made a mistake connecting the secondaries. But we have to be prepared for that. Now, let me do something more reasonable. Let me uh, connect the three secondaries like this. X2, Y2, and Z2. I join the non-dots of the three coils this way. So we have a Y in the primary, a Y in the secondary. This is a neutral of the secondary. This is phase A of the secondary, phase B and phase C. You say, wait a minute. How do you know that this is phase A of the secondary and not this one or that one? It is a convention. The convention is that we um, assign the phase 2 of the secondary to a coil of the same transformer X that is connected to phase A of the primary. 
that leaves that one. That is x2, that is a2. So this is a connection that is y in the primary, y in the secondary, and there is no phase shift in the voltage of a1 to neutral to a2 to neutral. We call that a yy0 connection. The uppercase is the primary connection, the lowercase is the secondary, and zero is the phase shift between neutral to a1 and neutral to a2. Is that all? No. Look at this other possibility. Check it out. I take the same three coils and connect them like this. X2, Y2, and Z2. This time, I join them by the dots, this way. Which one is A2? A2 is a terminal connected to X2. Has to be the one at the bottom, right? This is A2, and then the others to follow, because it's a positive sequence, three-phase system. What kind of connection is this? You say it's a Y in the primary, Y in the secondary, so it's a YY. But this time, there is a phase shift between N to A1 in the primary and N to A2 in the secondary. How are we going to describe them? Well, this is called a YY6. The YY, we understand, what is a 6? Industry uses this standard, a clock. In that clock, by convention, always phase A of the primary will be at 12 o'clock there. And then, where is the voltage of A2 with respect to neutral? This one, at 6 o'clock. If you're thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, if that voltage there is plus 90 degrees, not negative 90 degrees. No. What is 90 degrees is the voltage in X2, but the voltage of A2 with respect to N is the negative of the voltage of X2. Ergo, it's negative 90 degrees. So what is the phase shift? between that voltage and this one, 6 hours, 6 times 30 degrees, 180 degrees. But we write that, 6 hours, that's a YY6. Conventions of the clock. Always the primary A1, B1, and C1 will be at 12, at 4, and at 8 o'clock. Always, in any connection, that's a standard. Let's say that the primaries are connected, not in a Y, but in a delta, in this way coil X1 of transformer X between phases B and A of the primary and coil Y1 of the second transformer and coil Z1 of the third transformer in a delta, all right, connected to the primary. Remember, the voltages X2, Y2, and Z2 must be in phase with those, must be parallel. So we have this possibility. We have this, who is that one? Oh, it's parallel to X1. That has to be X2. That's right. That is X2. And then we have Y2 and Z2. Where is the phase A of the secondary in this case? In X2. Must be here at 5 o'clock. So this system is a Y. Is a delta in the primary. Y in the secondary. And what is a group? It's a 5. That is a DY5. Hmm. Another possibility. Sure. Let's say, same as before, remember the convention. Phase A of the primary is always at 12, B is at 4, and C is at 8. Again, we connect the primaries X1, Y1, and Z1 in a delta. But this time, X2 will connect it like so. That is X2, and then this would be Y2 and Z2. Where is A2? What is the phase A of the secondary? Oh, connected to X2 to the secondary of transformer X must be at 11. What connection is this one? Is a delta in the primary? Y in the secondary? It's a group 11. That is a DY11. And you must be thinking, how many possibilities have we got? Quite a few. But there were so many that things were getting a bit crazy out of hand. So engineers sat down and decided, let's normalize that. Of all the possibilities, for new installations, let's use only four. Those four in highlight. YY0, DY5, and YD5. And you're thinking, what is that uh, YZ5? It's a connection that we will discuss in a different movie. Good. So YY0, DY5, and YD5. That's correct. We have seen the three. Tutorial time. We have three single-phase transformers. Each one of them is good for 200 to 100 volts, and they are connected in a DY5. In a single phase equivalent that we want of that three phase connection, what is the voltage A to neutral of the primary?
and what is the single phase equivalent voltage VA to neutral of the secondary. Let's have a look at the clock diagram. The standard for the primary A at 12, B at 4 and C at 8. Let's have a look at the phases of the primary and of the secondary. The secondary is a group 5, so phase A of the secondary must be at 5 o'clock. The primary is connected in a delta between 12 and 4 for, for transformer X, that would be X1 primary of transformer X, and that is 200 volts. But if that voltage is 200, that means that this voltage would be 200 divided by root 3. And this voltage, oh, that's just 100 because the secondary is connected in the Y. This voltage is 200 divided by root 3, and this is just 100 volts. And those are the answers of those two questions. Let's draw a single phase equivalent of that three phase connection. Here, we want to represent only the Y, Y equivalent of that connection. We have phase A of the primary to neutral of the primary phase A of the secondary to neutral of the secondary. And the voltage on the left is 200 divided by root 3 volts. And the voltage on the right is 100 volts. Is that all? No, that's not all. Because that being an ideal transformer and all is suggesting that the 100 volts are in phase with the 200 over root 3 volts. And that is not true. So we include a phase shift to this model. And we say when we go from primary to secondary in this transformer, we have to subtract 150 degrees in the phase. In the phase of what? Of the voltage, of the current, of both. You have to subtract 150 degrees to the phases of both currents and voltages, so the power factor remains the same. Remember that. The power factor should not change across an ideal transformer. This is not your vanilla flavor ideal transformer, but behaves like one with the one exception that there is a phase shift across. Let's talk about three phase cores. Instead of having three single phase transformers, sometimes we use a single three phase unit. How does that work? Check it out. Let's say we have, to begin with, three single phase transformers and we join them together like so. Three single phase transformers, right? And we're going to wire the primer and the secondary of each one on the outermost column, like this one. That is primary or phase A of the primary. And the secondary is a bit um, below that one, or maybe around that coil there, on the same column. And that creates a flux due to phase A. And then we have the coils of um, the primary of phase B and the flux created by, by that current and the coils of phase C and the flux created by that current. That is right. The column in the center, you agree with me, is three times the iron as one of the columns on the outside, right? Because we are joining in the hip three single phase transformers. Yeah, that's right. So I have no advantages. Not so far. But I have a question. Do you agree that in a three phase system, so the fluxes in phases A, B, and C are out of phase by 120 degrees. Now you tell me, what is the sum of the three? What is the total flux in the column in the center? It is zero, right? So how about we remove it like so? We would be saving a lot of iron, a lot of weight, a lot of money. But that shape is kind of awkward. Let's push the far column on the back into the center position and align them, which is um, easier to manufacture like this, right? That works just fine as long as the currents are balanced, right? Now let's talk about how do we do uh, the short circuit and open circuit test of a three phase transformer. These are not three single phase transformers. It is a single three phase unit and we want to perform a three phase um, short circuit test. Look, this is the way it works. Let's assume that it's connected in the Y, the primary, that side. The secondary is connected in a delta. That's where we're going to put the source and the instruments and would we'll short the side on the left. Good. So here, shorting them. Because of the way it's shorted, that is equivalent of shorting each one of the phases separately, right? Convince yourself that that is so. The instruments 
and the sources that power the short circuit test will be on the right. We will measure the line current of the short circuit test, the line to line voltage of the short circuit test, and the total three phase power absorbed by that transformer during the short circuit test. Look at it this way. On the left, that impedance of the coil on the left is in parallel with RC, in parallel with JXM. And you know what happens. RC and JXM are gone. Now let's refer everybody to the right and uh, simplify them in series. And this is what we get. What is that? That is a trio of impedances connected in delta. And the value will be the short circuit delta equivalent of the transformer's phases. Let's find a y equivalent. Sure, divide them by three and we get a y equivalent. And that's the one we will be using whenever we solve one phase of the three phase system. And how, how do we compute that? Well, the line uh, um, current of the short circuit test is a, is a current, the short circuit current of that single phase uh, y equivalent. And the power, one third of the total three phase power. And the voltage, the line to line short circuit voltage measured divided by root three. And with that, we use the same formulas and we find our short circuit y and x short circuit o y. I leave that to you, my students, to do the similar analysis for an open circuit test of a three phase transformer. Now, some credits. I want to thank and recommend that you visit JMAX Simulation Technology for Electromechanical Design for the three phase transformer picture, the one below. They have a very good discussion of losses on three phase transformers. Go visit them. The link is right there. And with that, my friend, I sign off for the night. Good night and have a very good night's sleep. See you on the next movie.